Hello, human. I am Elena, your friendly electronic entertainment android. Welcome to my Let's Play of King's Quest 6. Air today, gone tomorrow, part 8. We've rescued the king and queen from the underworld. Now we have to find a way to get into the castle and rescue Kasima. First we'll give the final white rose to Sing Sing so she can bring it to Kasima. There's no reason to use that there. Come on, take the rose. Alexander holds out the rose, hoping that the bird will deliver it to Kasima. The nightingale takes the rose and heads for the castle once more. A white rose, how beautiful. It must be from Alexander. <gasps> how I wish that I could see him with my own eyes. But Abdul will never allow it. He only risks capture by sending me these things. Dear to my heart though they are. Fly elsewhere, my pretty friend. Do not endanger Prince Alexander again by taking tokens from his hand. Forgive me, Alexander, and forget me. I cannot return your love, for fear that I shall never leave this castle again. Don't worry, Kasima. Alexander is coming to help you. Alexander waits in vain for Kasima's nightingale to return, but the bird does not. Could there be something wrong? Or does Kasima simply not welcome his attentions further? Would you travel to a foreign country? Risk your life for someone and send various gifts to them after one single meeting. I'm pretty sure there's a word for someone who does that in real life. Starts with an S and ends with an R. Now we have to get a specific lamp from the old peddler guy. Excuse me, peddler, but I have an old lamp that might interest you. An old lamp, and what a nice traditional design, too. <laughs> Take your pick of my new lamps. I think you can screw up the ending if you don't pick the right lamp. It's the blue one that we saw in the visitor's table. Ah, a fine choice, my son. Here is your new lamp. Good day. And I thank you, sir. Good day. He's probably hoping to find a genie in that lamp. Drat! Another dud! Better luck next time, I guess. And now it's time to pull a guy brush three bit and play dead. Good day, Prince Alexander. But first we have to make another trade because we need the magic paintbrush. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. I think I'd like the painter's brush. Very good, Prince Alex. The painter's brush it is. May your painting go well. Feel free to bring back the brush at any time. Thank you. And now we track the vizier's little lackey. Alexander suddenly gets a very sneaky idea. I can't go on anymore. Without Kasima, I'd just rather not live. Prince Alex, no! It's true! The Wazir has beaten me. I give up! Poison is my last resort. Stop! I am... no... more. Oh, what a waste. The poor young fool. He's dead. He's dead. Wait until Abdul hears. He'll be so pleased. He sure is happy.
I told you not to pop in like that. You can learn to knock like everybody else. Sorry, Master. I couldn't help myself. I have great news. Well, what is it? Prince Alexander is dead. He killed himself in despair over losing Cosima. <laughs> what? Are you positive? That young man has proven to be most devious. I saw the whole thing myself, Master. He was really and truly quite dead. <laughs> hmm. If what you say is true, it shall be most convenient. You've spent enough time on that little irritant. We must start thinking about the wedding. Anything, Master. Oh, I do love weddings. Well, we do want you to look your prettiest, don't we? Now, Shamir Shamazel, to the lamp with you. Prepare yourself as we discussed. Alexander's heart lurches to life in his chest. Prince Alex! But you... you were... Sorry, friend. I was doing a little acting, I'm afraid. Ah, of course. The strange cloaked man. You are quite clever. And a bit too exciting for an old man. Alrighty. Now that we've pulled the elaborate trick, it's time to make our way into the castle. Hey, wait. I think I'm supposed to give the new lamp to Jolo. Hello. I will be right up. Where is that guy? He said he'd come back. Now, what can I do for you? I thought I was supposed to meet him here. I have to give the lamp to Jolo so he can pull a switcheroo with a real lamp. Alexander has obtained a new lamp made of blue-colored glass with a tall, thin neck and a cork-like cap. Well, maybe I can find Jolo in the castle. Now we make the magic paint. We already have the swamp ooze and the water from the river sticks. Now we have to stir it with one of Nightmare's feathers. Alexander dips the large black feather into the teacup and stirs the contents gently. How much stirring does it require? To his amazement, the jet black color of the feather slowly drains from end to tip into the teacup. The teacup mixture blackens and thickens to a paint-like consistency. Alexander carefully puts it away, discarding the drained feather. And now the enchantment. To cast the magic paint spell, Alexander must first paint an object at a desired location, then use the spell book on the painted object to enchant it. Oh, well alrighty then. We obviously can't use the main entrance, so we'll paint a secret door on the back wall. I've almost completed this game, and I still don't know how the item menu works. Feeling artistically inspired, Alexander decides to make use of the large blank castle wall. Ah, a doorway. Just what Alexander was thinking this wall needed. Very convenient. Alexander opens the spell book. And now we read the enchantment. With trepidation, Alexander gathers his strength for the enchantment of the painted door. Magic paint, black as ink, bring to life what I think. Make it real what I draw, according to this spoken law. The spell worked. The door has magically solidified. Time to sneak in. Eager to be inside the castle at last, Alexander opens the enchanted door. 
and steps inside. The magic paint door fades back into the wall. So much for an easy exit. We're finally in sight. The castle basement is cool after the heat of the day. The arched domed ceilings add to the sense of spaciousness in the wide corridors. On the east wall are three dungeon doors. This is the west basement hallway. Three dungeon doors line the east wall of the hallway. This castle is full of guards. We have to be very careful. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. Alexander is standing in a dim, damp dungeon cell. The walls and floor are made of gray granite stones. A cot in the corner is the only furniture. A gargoyle peers down maliciously from over the dungeon door. Well, this isn't very cozy. The cot looks uncomfortable, not to mention a little dusty. Alexander decides against taking a nap there. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. Mother? Mother, where are you? Is that the boy the ghost lady was searching for? Well, at least he's already dead. I think we were supposed to give him something from his mother. A spirit weeps inconsolably on the cot. The spirit appears to be the ghost of a little boy. What's the matter, little boy? I'm lost. I can't find my mother. I don't know why she would just leave me here. I've been alone ever so long. Mother? Mother, where are you? Let's give him the handkerchief. You must be the son of the spirit I met in the realm of the dead. She gave me this handkerchief and asked me to tell you that she's waiting for you there. It's Mama's. It even smells like her. I can feel her now. I know where to go. Wait. Before you go, is there anything you can tell me about the castle? I like to play in secret places. In the basement behind the Man of Steel is a door. Nobody except me knows it's there anymore. Well, now we know that there's a secret passage. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. It doesn't look like there's anything in this cell. Alexander doesn't see any way of opening that door manually. Huh? Maybe it's a magical door. A closed door on the north wall bears a small brass plaque. The plaque reads, Guard Room. Uh-oh. I guess we don't want to go anywhere near the door. Alexander decides to find out what's on the other side of that door. Hey, it's Jolo. Prince Alexander, I can't believe it! How did you get into the castle? Well, I... Actually, it's a little hard to explain. I bet. <laughs> you run the terrible risk of being here, though. The castle is crawling with guard dogs, especially today. The Wazir will have your hide if he finds you. I know that, Jalo. But Kasima is being married today. What greater risk is there than that? 
Of course you're right. Young love. <laughs> I forgot what heartburn it is. But what are you supposed to do about it? I've got to try to see her. Maybe even stop the wedding. Is that all? And here I thought you would try something dangerous. <sighs> Don't worry about me, friend. Just tell me, where is Kasima? As far as I know, she's still in her bedroom upstairs. You'd never make it up there, though. The guard dogs are everywhere, and they're very loyal to the crown. Unfortunately, right now the crown means El Hazred. If we had proof of something truly a foul, the guard dogs might listen. As it is, they're your enemies, not his. I understand. I've had no lack of enemies since I got here. In fact, you'd almost think I wasn't welcome. There's probably a good reason why so many wish to harm you. I believe the Wazir's genie has learned of your presence on the islands. Tell me about this genie. al Hazred brought the genie with him when he came to this kingdom. It is seldom the genie will take human life himself. Uh, usually he is more of a trickster and a spy. But that doesn't mean he isn't dangerous. In fact, he is quite powerful. If, for example, we could get the genie's lamp, then you could master the genie. El Hazred and all our other problems would be solved. Hmm. Is that merely wishful thinking? Or do you have something in mind? Well, I admit I have often daydreamed about owning that lamp. My fingers are nimble enough, and I could probably find the chance to steal it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the theft would be detected immediately, and I happen to prefer my neck attached to my body. If the theft were detected. Exactly. So, I have also thought if I had a replica of the genie's lamp, an exact replica, I just might be able to... Ah, uh, where would we get a replica of the genie's lamp? <laughs> uh, dreaming's pleasant, but I'm afraid it won't help to stop the wedding. But for Kasima's sake, uh, well, I wish you luck. I'll be here if you can think of anything I can do to help. Thanks, Jalo. Guess what Alexander has in his bag, Jalo? I've been thinking of what you said about swapping a replica for the genie's lamp. I got this lamp from the old lamp seller in town. Do you think it will pass? Why, yes! It's an exact replica! That's amazing! How did you guess? I suppose it was intuition. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to wait for the right moment, mind you. But I should be able to get close enough to swap this for the real thing. And none shall be the wiser. Now you shall see Jalo's skill. I'm sure your hands are mightier than my sword, my clever friend. <laughs> Go ahead and do as you've planned, and let me worry about swapping the lamp. If I accomplish the trickery, I'll manage to get the lamp to you somehow. You never fear. I have faith, Jolo. You are a true friend. Oh, shucks. I'd do anything for the princess. Okay, now we can trust Jolo to make the switch. Which means that the genie won't be a problem when we confront the vizier. A plain trunk provides minimal storage for the bedroom. Alexander doesn't want to intrude on Jallo's privacy by looking through his trunk. But Helena does. There's a door at the top of the stairs that must lead to an upper floor. The door has a doorknob and a keyhole. I think it leads to the throne room, but we can't go there until the time is just right. From the East Hall, Alexander hears the sounds of a door opening and a guard's footsteps trudging heavily down a flight of stairs. Oh crap. We should hurry. In the corner is a suit of armor of ancient design. Its right arm beckons slightly. I'm gonna touch it. Remembering what the little boy ghost said, Alexander experiments with the suit of armor. He pushes down, then pulls up on the knight's right arm. A secret passage. 
Let's go inside and see where it leads. Alexander hears the sound of voices coming from nearby. There's a little spy hole in the wall. Alexander peers through the chink in the wall. Captain, I've been hearing rumors from the guards who've been watching the princess. They say lately she's been pounding on her door and begging to be let out. Ain't none of my business, sir, but news like that is upsetting the other dogs. Ain't no guard in the castle who would willingly keep the princess anywhere she don't want to be. Hazred <laughs> claims that a foreign intruder is here to assassinate her. That's why she's got to be kept under lock and key right up until the wedding. Call me an old dog that can't learn new tricks, but I say the princess should be the one given the orders. Alhazred has been in charge for months, what with the king's death and Kasima's mourning. Tonight, the wedding will seal it, and there's nothing we can do about it. Like him or not, he's our liege. Need I remind you of your oath to the crown? Aye, we've an oath. For the sake of the princess, we'll not be forgetting it. He'd just better treat her well. Speaking of the wazir, what do you reckon he's keeping in that magical room of his? It's not a magic room. It's just the door he's enchanted somehow. I say he's still got the royal treasury in there, along with whatever else he's so eager to protect. Not even the court treasurer is allowed in there anymore. I heard him in the hall the other day. He was speaking to that door. Black magic is what I say. I heard him say, Ali, but then Bay came up and started yapping at me. Enough! It is not our place to question the practices of our liege, no matter how strange. The wedding will be starting soon. Report to the throne room when you hear the music start. So it seems that the door that didn't have a handle or a keyhole requires a password. And I guess it starts with Ali. Let's see where this staircase leads. Why won't he climb? Alexander sees nothing of interest there. Alexander sees nothing of interest there. How is it even possible for me to mess up the controls when they're this simple? Phew, that was a climb. Alexander hears the faint sound of a woman crying nearby. Another hole in the wall. Let's see who is on the other side. Alexander peers through the chinks in the wall, trying to locate the source of the crying sounds. Alexander's palms begin to sweat and his heart to race. It's Cosima. He's phoned her. Psst. Princess Cosima. What? Who's there? It is I, Alexander. I'm here behind this wall. My, how suave that sounds. Alexander? It really is you! Oh, I knew you were close by, but how did you get inside the castle walls? It's a long story and not important now. You did get my ring. Oh, yes. It has brought me such comfort, Alexander, to know you were close by and had not forgotten. But you shouldn't be here. You're only endangering yourself. I don't care about the danger. I would brave anything to learn. What is it? Alhazred, do you want to wed him, Kasima? Oh, please believe me when I say that I never agreed to marry that man. Even when my father trusted Abdul absolutely, I never liked him. But with mother and father gone, I'm afraid there's no stopping him. If you do not wish to marry him, Kasima, you shall not. I promise you. Only come with me now, and we shall escape. How? I cannot fit through this wall. Besides, do you think I could leave my kingdom, my people, in Abdul's hands? But Abdul would tear the castle apart if I were to disappear from my room. 
You shall have to do what you can to delay his plans from your end. I can't just leave you here. Alexander, do not despair from me. I have been safe in this room for nearly six months now. Abdul can be in no hurry, whatever he plans. After all, I'm to be his bride, am I not? I have been planning too, you see. I believe I can escape. If I can only get a chance to lay my hands on a weapon, there might be an opportunity in the hustle of the wedding. But I... Shh, just a moment more, then you must go. Let us not waste time with words. Please, let me just look at you, dear Alexander. We should give the dagger from her inventory Here, to her. take this dagger. It's not much, but it might come in handy. Why, it's perfect. This is just the sort of thing I've been looking for. Thank you, Alexander. I'll keep it close and use it if I must. Alexander looks with longing at the fair Cosima. She's even more beautiful than he remembered. Oh no! Someone's coming! The lock on Cosima's door rattles abruptly. Alexander, hurry! Step away before they see you! Alexander hears scuffling and a woman's brief cry from the other side of the wall. Then, silence. Well, at least she has a weapon now. Now we need to find the password for the locked door in the hallway. Time to do some spying again. Alexander looks through the chink in the wall. It's the vizier. Dear Shadrach, salutations from the Society of the Black Cloak, etc., etc. My long preparations are about to come to fruition. In a matter of minutes, I will wed the lovely... Kasima. <laughs> Once I've established my power and my crown, I can stage another accident. The princess has proven infuriatingly stubborn, as you know. She's becoming quite a dangerous little thorn in my side. In a way, it is a shame I have to kill her. She is lovely and would be amusing to keep around, but I can't risk her talking treason to one of the guards. So far, I've managed to keep her locked away, but I can't continue that forever. Well, on to it now. I'd send her to you, but as you know, I had no luck in doing so with Mordak. I close in triumph. King Abdul Alhazred. I think it's about time to see if Shamir has taken care of the wench as I asked. It's almost time for the wedding. What a creep. The Wazir's words fill Alexander with blazing anger and fear for Cosima's life. That blackguard! That murderous swine! He'll not have his way if I have anything to say about it. I'm not very familiar with the other games in the King's Quest series, but I think Mordek was the main villain in the previous game. Alexander sees lots of black Cloaks? This looks like that evil guy's bedroom. Alexander is standing in a masculine bedroom. Polished marble walls rise to meet a tall ceiling, and the furnishings have an opulent feeling. He wonders whose bedroom this is. Maybe we'll find the password in here if we do a little snooping. A storage trunk sits at the foot of the bed. The trunk bears a large brass lock. The trunk is locked. And we happen to have a skeleton key. Alexander inserts the skeleton key in the trunk's lock and turns it. He hears a click. Alexander opens the trunk. It looks like the owner of this trunk is quite the correspondent. The stack of letters appears to be ordered by date 
because the top one is dated only a month ago. Yoink. Alexander picks up the most recent letter and examines it. The letter is addressed to Abdul Alhazred from the wizard Shadrach. It reads, Greetings to a brother of the Black Cloak. I was sorry to hear of Great Mordak's death, though he was a bit of a ninny at chess. It seems the plans for that little kingdom of yours are coming along. I must congratulate you on your handling of the king and queen. Isolating the island so that no protest could develop was another brilliant stroke. It looks like there's not much left to stand in your way. Do as I recommended with the girl, and you shall have your crown. That fiend! That letter will be very useful. There's a box of ebony on the table. Alexander opens the ebony box and looks inside. Inside the ebony box is a piece of paper with the word Zebu printed on it. Alexander can read the piece of paper without taking it. I think we have the password for the door. Alexander steps confidently out into the upstairs hallway and sees two guard dogs. Oh shit. Hey, who the... Um, hello there. Don't just stand there. Grab him, Bay. Oh, I'll bet it's that saboteur fellow the wizard warned us about. I say we run him through right here and now. No. Woof. The wazir will run you through if he doesn't get a chance at the prisoner. Let's put him in the dungeon for safekeeping, then we'll go tell the captain. Aye, hey, Wolf, you're right. Let's go. You'll stay in here until we find out what the wazir wants to do with you. The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind them. Alexander wonders how he'll get out of this one. That went smoothly. Psst. Prince Alex! Gallo! What are you doing here? Never mind. Quick! Before the guard dog patrol comes around again. But how did you know I was... This is no place to talk, Alexander. Just trust that I know everything that goes on in this castle. Now, be more careful. If you get caught again, I don't know if I'll be able to get you out. Thanks, Jolo. I honestly thought we were doomed. Let's give the door another try, shall we? There's a strange door on the west wall. There doesn't appear to be any handle or keyhole on the door. Since the door on the west wall has no visible knob or handle, Alexander decides to try to open it with his voice. He composes his words carefully. E L I Z E B you. Listen, door. I would have you open. Ali Zebu. It worked. Those trunks probably contain the kingdom's treasure. Once guarded so well and used so wisely by King Caliphim, now in the hands of that blackguard El Hazred. A small table graces the middle of the room. The table is covered by a velvet drapery. The initials AA are embroidered on the drapery. AA? That must stand for Abdul Al Hazred. Shall we see what's hidden underneath it? Alexander pulls the drapery aside, curious as to what might lie underneath. On the table is a strange-looking stone.
that's giving off an odd high-pitched noise. That must be the Isle of Wonders singing stone. Didn't the queens think that the beast had stolen it? On the table is a miniature oak tree. It looks very old. Hmm. That must be the sacred miniature oak that the druids thought the winged ones stole. On the table is a coat of arms with the head of a beast on the crest. Hmm. Beast said that his coat of arms was stolen by the druids. This must be it. On the table is a fleece made of gold. That fleece must belong to the winged ones. And they thought the Isle of Wonder had taken it. As Alexander looks at the objects on the table, he realizes the depth of the wazir's cunning. It must have been the wazir or an accomplice who stole that one thing most precious to each island and then leaked rumors that one of the other islands was responsible. What did the wazir have to gain by causing the islands to hate one another? He didn't want the other islands to form a united front against him. I think we've gathered enough evidence to understand what the vizier's been doing. I had to walk around in circles for a while to get the guards upstairs to leave, but I think the coast is finally clear. Alexander peeks through the keyhole. There is no one on the other side of the door. As you can hear, the wedding has started. Ale Alexander looks cautiously around the grand hall, but there are no guard dogs to be seen. The wedding music is coming from behind those two large doors. Prince Alexander, here. The wizier will have my head for allowing you within a mile of the royal wedding. Since you are of noble birth, I will give you five seconds to explain your presence here before killing you. I warn you, it had better be good. Is a damning letter that reveals an evil scheme good enough? Wait! If you love your princess, you'll hear me out. The wizier is not what he appears to be. Kasima is in terrible danger. I have proof that this is so. For your princess's sake, you must believe me. Let me see that. Saladin reads the letter, his sword points still against Alexander's throat. Alexander watches the guard dog's noble face darken with rage. Mm, this is treason. I'll have his throat. But how do I know this letter is not a forgery? You could have written this yourself. But I did not. Have you no doubts of your own about our Hazred? Don't you see? All he wants is the crown. Kasima is being coerced. We must stop the wedding. It is true. I have had my suspicions about the Wazir, especially when King Caliphim and Queen Alaria died. But I have seen Kasima with him several times. She appears to be quite happy, even enthusiastic. I don't believe she could love him if he truly were so wicked. I cannot believe for a moment that she loves that snake. A jilted lover would not believe it. But come, see for yourself. The captain of the guard leads Alexander into the throne room, where a ceremony seems to be in progress. Alexander feels his blood run cold at the sight. I, Kasima, declare Abdul Alhazred as my lawful and beloved husband and king of this realm. But, Kasima, what are you saying? Do you still claim that the princess is being forced? Perhaps it's you that's the danger, as the wizier has said. This has to be a trick. Kasima, stop! Prince Alexander here? This is an outrage! 
How dare you allow this traitor to get past you, Saladin? You stupid mutt! Can't you even keep the castle free of assassins during your own princess's wedding? Kill him! Kill him now! <sighs> Lord Alhazred, with all due respect, you are not quite king yet. And this is a wedding ceremony, not an execution. What? How dare you contradict me, you flea-bitten mongrel! I gave a direct order. Obey me, or feel my wrath! Milady, I apologize for my behavior, but I am yours to command in all things. I wanted merely to hear your own wishes from your own lips. Tell me what it is that you wish me to do with this young man, and I will obey. Why, Captain, you heard my dear Abdul. If he wishes this atrocious young man's death, then I want nothing more than to see him get his wish. Obey thy liege now and always. As you wish, Princess. Just as Saladin prepares to run Alexander through with his sword, a shout is heard from the direction of the Grand Hall. Hold! In the name of the true king! King Caliphim and Queen Alaria burst into the throne room, looking alive and well, and full of wrath. Behind them, a line of supporters look prepared to battle, if necessary, for their beloved royal couple. Kasima, darling, are you all right? Has he hurt you? Hands off of her, you murderous goat! If I want your advice, I'll ask for it, mother. But, Caliphim, that's not Kasima. I'd know my daughter anywhere. What have you done with our daughter, you devil? The lovely image of Kasima suddenly bursts into smoke and is replaced by the Wazir's genie. Why, you, you conniving serpent! Get him, guards! Saladin, your sword! Drat it all! You may have ruined my plans, but you won't get me, or your precious Kasima. Get them, Shamir! I command you! He's getting away! Stop him! Yes, sire! As soon as I deal with this genie! Shamir, the wazir's genie, begins to throw balls of dazzling light at the guard dogs. We have to catch the bastard. Final showdown time. Alexander, be careful! Al Hazard has a sword! Shut up, wench! Shamir Shamazel! Get in here! Here I am, master! It's about time, you bumbling fool! How could you let him follow me? Well, there were the guard dogs, master, and then... Never mind! Just kill him! Kill him now! <sighs> As you wish, master. Razzle, dazzle, snap and snazzle! Alexander, I did it! I swap the lamps. Here, quick, take it. Bless you, Jalo. I knew you could do it. Now get clear, friend. No argument there, my lord. Good luck. Let's capture us, Genie. Shamir Shamazel, hold your spells. I am your master now. I order you to go back into your lamp. How did you get my lamp? You thief! You... You... You've ruined me! My lamp! Oh, thank Balhalla! I hated working for that loathsome creature. I already feel his nastiness leaving me. How I've longed for a master like you! I've got a new master! I've got a new master! Yeah. 
So you are a thief as well, Alexander. Stealing the lamp was very clever, I'll grant you that. But I am the master thief. Face my sword if you dare. The man left standing shall have the lamp. So shall it be, Alhazred. I don't need the genie to deal with a coward like you. Inspiration. Alexander fixes upon the only weapon in sight. Zounds! This sword must weigh a ton. <laughs> Good. Then you shall only fail sooner, my prince. So, the mouse would bite? This mouse shall bite, as you shall soon see. Or should I say, soon feel? Ha! You can barely lift that sword, my prince. Better to lay it down now. I promise to dispatch you with little pain. A tempting offer. But I think I'll wait and see what this sword can do. Suit yourself. Alexander's arms start to tremble under the effort of wielding the huge sword. His muscles are nearing exhaustion. Ha! And so it ends! Not if I can help it, you murderer! Kasima thrusts the small dagger into Alhazred's shoulder with all her might. Ah! You! You dare raise a finger to me? You will regret that, princess! Kasima! Are you all right? I'm fine, Alexander. I was just so afraid for you. There's no need to fear anymore, princess. Yes, I know. How can I ever repay you? For myself, for my kingdom, it was not in me to let harm come to you. Can you find it in you, Princess, to give me more than your gratitude? Alexander, what are you saying? I love you, Kasima. Would you ever consider... Do you think you could... marry me? Could you ever have doubted it, my Prince? And they lived happily ever after. Uh, ahem. Oh! Guards! Princess Kasima, are you well? I'm quite well, thank you. Please take Abdul and put him in the dungeon. See to it that he gets a doctor. Yes, Majesty. And so concludes our adventure with Alexander. He rescued the princess and restored peace to the Green Isles. If you made it this far, I want to thank you for watching my playthrough of this game. Enjoy the royal wedding and the happy ending. Kasima and Alexander ask Captain Saladin to perform their wedding ceremony. Saladin is honored to do so. On this historical day of great joy in the land of the Green Isles, we witness the union of Kasima, beloved princess of this realm, and Alexander, Prince of Daventry. Do you, Prince Alexander of Daventry, take Princess Kasima to be your wife, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. And do you, Princess Kasima of the Land of the Green Isles, take Prince Alexander to be your husband, to love and to cherish, for as long as you both shall live? I do. Do you have a ring? I have Alexander's royal insignia ring. 
Very good. Please place the ring on Cosima's finger. Who gives this bride to be wed? Her mother and I willingly give our daughter's hand in wedlock. Who will speak for the groom? I will. Alexander's mother and I recognize his marriage to Princess Cosimo with glad hearts and sanction this union. Then, Alexander and Cosima, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Hooray! Congratulations, my children. I have an important question for you both. Please hear me. Yes, sire? Alexander, I welcome you into our family with open arms. I place trust in Alhazred because I so badly wanted a son and a husband for my beloved daughter. I was wrong. But you are true and good, Alexander. You have proven yourself to all my people. Thank you, sire. Olaria and I have been through much, even though we have returned to our kingdom. I do not think we are able to reign again. Will you two consider the crown? I know as king and queen, you can heal this small kingdom from all the damage that Alhazred has inflicted upon it. Oh, father. Why, I'm honored. What do you think, Cosima? I love my homeland, Alexander. I would be happy to stay and serve it all my days. Father, I believe I'm needed here. Would you be very disappointed if... Son, you must follow your destiny. I do believe the land of the Green Isles needs you. You'll be a magnificent king, though dearly missed in Daventry. Then, I accept. Oh, my boy, what a man you've become and how I will miss you. Don't worry, Mother. With Shamir's powers, we'll be able to visit often. I'm not about to forget my family. Mm, congratulations, Alexander. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, dear sister. Oh, Alexander, I'm so glad. Between the return of my beloved parents and our new reign, you've made me so happy. I'm glad I could make up for some of your suffering, my beautiful wife. Congratulations, King Alexander. When we return home to Daventry, your crew will be glad to hear that their battle at sea was worthwhile in bringing forth a new monarch. We were so worried when your men arrived home without you, son. I'm so thankful that you are safe and happy. And I am as grateful that my crew did not pay for my driven heart. You have only brought us all good fortune, sire. With Shamir saved and his power used for good, reuniting the islands will be far easier. He has already repaired the ferry. Your road will be easier now that the islands are no longer feuding. Already the wounds are starting to heal. Yes, my love. Discovering the island's stolen treasures has done more to bring peace to this land than anything else. It is now clear that Alhazred had Shamir steal each of the island's most valued treasures, then blame the thefts on others to cause the islands to hate each other. Now let us celebrate our good fortune. The evil that has plagued this land is done, and a new reign begins. Long live King Alexander and Queen Cosima. Long live King Alexander! Long live Queen Cosima! Long live the land of the Green Isles! Hooray! 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 You seem so far away, and 
And I just need to hear your voice I just need to hear you say If you would have me go Why do you haunt me now? 